We, we are seeing a lot of movements like Pride Month, Black Lives Matter, Me Too. And what we said, this needs to come from the top. But and everyone here, what if it's not coming from the top? Because top is mostly majority, not the diversity, right? So what are, what do you guys is the best? Like how uh, someone uh, in the company don't feel that the leadership is not taking this seriously? Leadership is not doing anything. How they can communicate their let's say, unsatisfaction and communicate with the leadership so the leadership should do something. So everyone here in the audience will probably feel that uh, in the world and what they can do to communicate that correctly to the leadership. And uh, Jordan, do you want to start? Yeah. Uh, sure. I think there are a number of um, sort of small steps. I think it, I can't be understated the amount of... Um, uh, the amount of movements that have happened from the ground level, like from groundswell up, and it frequently does not happen, you know, from the top down. Um, I think you can ask for survey data, right, and say, like, I want to know the perspectives of um, the uh, employees of color at my job right now. Um, you can ask in, if you have any sort of open um, forums, you can ask those questions, you can ask for diversity data, what are our numbers, how are we doing? Um, if you're sitting on any recruiting or hiring teams, you can make it your intent to um, you know, promote and foster relationships with uh, people of color and invite them. A lot of our jobs that we get are from referrals. Um, so diversifying your network, referring people to your company will inevitably help build that network as well. I'll just echo um, what Jordine so eloquently just said, but I think the takeaway for me is that everybody is at the top of something. You may not be at the top of the company, but you have control over something. So however big or small your little kingdom is, influence change there and uh, really start the conversation. Make it transparent. Just start talking about it and don't let it be the elephant in the room or don't um, you know, be the one that stays silent when somebody says something inappropriate. Just have influence where you do have influence. Yeah, I, I would just say, you, you know, operate in the sphere of your control, right? So, so for example, we're, we're hiring someone on our team right now and, um, you know, not, ne not necessarily like wanting to exclude any candidates, but the place I've chose to uh, promote some of these opportunities is within Black VC, for example, which is a VC group for, 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 um, for people in the Black community, as well as Latin X VC. And so I, I think kind of where you, uh, where you promote opportunities um, and how you communicate that is, is very important. Yeah, um, I think. Oh, my. Oh, do you, you can skip. Uh, Dana, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that I think that, I mean, I hope that everyone always feels the right to speak something that pa they're passionate and important about. And I think there's enough um, support now. If like, you, if like a, an employee came to me and was like, I'm curious, like why you haven't hired an African-American or I'd like to diversify our team a bit, like they can now use examples that have been shown in media and that are current to kind of support them in like, in, in expressing their feelings or thoughts about diversity and inclusion. So it's a good thing that like, you know, there's, there are some big people that have given up board seats um, to include more people on the board. And it's, it's, I think there will continue to be more coming up that people can, can use as support to kind of, to not be afraid to speak their mind is what I'm saying.